The people in our village faced a lot of difficulties due to the lack of electricity. After sunset, nobody could do any activity and stayed in darkness. Since our village is located in a forested area, various wild animals such as elephants would come into the village. Due to the lack of light, we even faced difficulty while studying. We hardly received any facility at the government schemes and felt helpless. Rajanga and its neighboring villages had never seen electricity. Nor did they stand a chance in future due to their remote location in the middle of dense forests. How can such geographically challenged regions be electrified? Can there be a solution that is customized for their needs? A solution which is technically viable, affordable, socially acceptable and manageable by local communities. In this project, what we, we have... Uh, These questions brought together a group of researchers from India and the UK to Dhen Canal in the state of Odisha to demonstrate a reliable and local off-grid electricity supply solution. Uh, we implemented this research project to design a framework and test whether appropriate solutions can be developed for the local area and how these solutions can be scaled up and replicated to cover uh, unelectrified areas, especially in the off-grid uh, model uh, in developing countries. One of the main objectives of the WASIS project was to demonstrate and test the local solutions framework through three distinct techno-institutional models that align with site-specific conditions. Terry started work here in 2012 with a cluster of five villages, Rajanga village, Rajanga hamlet, Baguli, Chadoi and Kanaka villages, all separated by a few kilometers. The idea was to electrify the entire cluster through five separate solar mini-grids, which are collectively managed by a single entity led by the villagers themselves. So the first step was to form a village energy committee with representatives from all five villages. Irada, a local NGO, was brought in to handhold the VEC through various processes and to monitor the project. Suresh Pradhan, a local villager, was unanimously chosen by the villagers to lead the VEC. His grandfather Basudev donated land to build a community centre to house the mini-grid. Quite evidently, the villagers were excited. The government had agreed to electrify our village but the project was stopped. Now we are receiving solar light and have become dependent on it. My family has been living here for generations. Those who migrated to this village had no place to stay and had asked me for land which I gave. So when the solar project started, a suitable land was required to build the community centre, which again I happily donated. Based on the load profiles of the villages, the project team designed five independent systems. The bigger villages, Rajanga, Kanaka and Baguli, got AC mini-grids catering to around 40 households per system. In addition, they could also handle other productive community and agricultural loads. The two smaller sites, Rajanga Hamlet and Chadoi, which have around 15 households, were given DC microgrids to provide lighting and power to charge mobile phones. Both AC and DC systems provide each household with two light points and a mobile charging point. The illumination level in both the systems was kept the same to ensure equity in service delivery. We were living on the roots and fruits from the forest and didn't know what light was. Now, my children are able to study at school during the daytime and at home during the night. They even take tuitions in the evening. I am really grateful for the light. The grids have also lit up street lights, making it safer for women and children to move around after dark and also to keep the elephants away at night.
Beyond lighting, the next objective was to use the solar grids to create income opportunities in such poverty-ridden regions. The villagers narrowed upon a few livelihood activities related to locally available raw material. A turmeric grinder with an electronic weighing scale and a sealing machine were made available to all users at the community center. As part of self-help groups, women were trained to use these appliances. Gradually, this has helped the SHGs to standardize their product and sell it directly in the market without being exploited by middlemen. Similarly, the traditional activity of stitching sal leaf plates has been given a facelift. Women collect leaves from the forest in the evening and with the light provided at home, they stitch these leaves. I collect them in the morning and take them to the community center. Where we press the leaves using a mechanical sal leaf plate maker. I return the leaf plates to the women in the evening. They then sell them to the market and earn from it. As president of the Village Energy Committee, Suresh Pradhan remains vigilant about any complaints or technical issues. To ensure smooth operation and maintenance of the grids, each village is serviced by an operator. The villagers are happy to pay a nominal monthly fee for light and other services. As an operator, I collect a monthly fee of Rs 50 from each household, maintain a record and then submit the collected amount to the VEC. The amount collected helps us with maintenance of the system and its further development. These are early days yet to evaluate the sustainability of this pilot. Electricity has come to these villages after a very long wait and they are not willing to let go of it easily. We will be able to sustain the project only if everybody in the village works together towards its success. It is not possible for an individual to manage it alone. Everyone needs to sit and discuss it and then take decisions with mutual consensus. Only then can we make it happen. But yes, we can sustain it.